flip that quick. Flip outfit blue like Lilo Stitch. How's it going guys? Today I want to go over a question called Task Scheduler. This is a super, super common interview question right now that's going on at Facebook. So it's a good one to know. As a quick note, sorry that I've not been uploading like the past month or so. I actually got sick for a while and then I was out of town and I was studying for a bunch of stuff. So uh, kind of couldn't really can commit a lot of time to uploading, but hopefully I will start uploading super regularly again. Uh, I don't really want to commit or promise anything just yet, but I, I, I really am trying to upload a, a lot more again. So hopefully I will be able to do so. So just as a quick startup, if you guys have any kind of questions you guys want me to do, be sure to leave it in the comments. I'll try and address all the comments like I always do, and I would be happy to try and solve any questions you guys are having problems with. So again, today's task scheduler, this is asked by Facebook. It's definitely a good question to know. It says, given a character array representing tasks CPU needs to do, it contains capital letters A to Z, where letters represent different tasks. Uh, the task could be done without the original order. Each task could be done in one interval. For each interval, the CPU could finish one task or just be idle. However, there's a non-negative cooling interval N that just means between the two same tasks, there must be at least N intervals that the CPU is doing different tasks or just being idle. You need to return the least number of intervals that the CPU will take to finish all the given tasks. Wow, that was a mouthful and kind of broken English. But anyways, the whole gist of this problem is that we're given a bunch of tasks, some of which are recurring. Um, so here, right, we see that A occurs three times, B occurs three times. And we need to process all these tasks on the CPU. And the only catch really is that between the two same tasks, there's some non-negative cooling interval. Uh, so if this is our example, right, and n is 2, 2, which is the non-negative cooling interval, we output 8, and the reason is because we run a, then b, and then we have to be idle, uh, and then a, then b again, and we have to be idle, right, because we haven't had two processes in between a here, so we can't rerun a, uh, and so we have to be idle here and here, and then we output 8, because this took 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, uh, cycles, I guess, or intervals to actually run all these tasks. So the first thing that should really kind of jump out at you that jumped out at me is this is like a greedy approach. And by greedy, I mean you want to run the most frequently occurring task first. And the reason for that is because then if you run the most frequently occurring task first, you have the best chance of not running into the, uh, the situation where you, the CPU has to be idle, right? So ideally the, the CPU will be idle as little as possible. And if we run the most frequently occurring task first, we have the best chance of it running uh, again in the shortest time period because we can put all the other tasks between it. So that's the first thing that jumps out. The second thing that jumps out is that because we want to always be running the most frequently occurring task or if we can't run A, right, which you know arguably in this scenario is the most frequently occurring task, we want to run the next one, which would be B. So if we had five processes. We always want to greedily be taking the most frequently occurring tasks that we can process at, process at any given moment. So we probably want like a max heap, right? So we can keep track of all the most frequently occurring tasks. So I think what we could do is we can make a map, a hash map. We can count however many times all of our different tasks occur, throw them all in a heap, and then we could begin doing our processing. So let's start doing that, okay? So we're gonna make a hash map. So hash map, and we'll map a character, which will be a task, to an integer, which is how many times it occurs. Map equals new hash map. Cool. And so now we're going to say for every character C, right, which is really a task in our tasks, we're going to say map dot put that character with map dot get or default C comma zero plus one. So if you guys haven't seen me use this function before, all this is doing is it's going to say put whatever C maps to in the map increment it by one, so plus one, or if we've never seen C before, we're gonna put it in the map with a count of one. That's all that means. Whoops. Okay, cool. So now what we wanna do is we wanna make a max heap, right? So let's make a priority queue, priority queue. And it's just gonna hold integers because we don't really care what task is running necessarily. We just wanna make sure that the count of the task is the highest or the most frequently occurring. So we'll say max heap equals new priority queue. Cannot type right now. Oops. And now we need to tell the priority queue how to organize itself, right? So we're just gonna pass it a function saying, if you're given two elements A and B, return or compare them by saying B minus A. So all that's gonna do, all that fancy jargon is really just gonna say, give me a max heap. 
put the max uh, the max number at the root of the heap. So we have constant time access to it. Cool, so now we have our max heap, so we're now just gonna say max heap dot add all, and we're gonna say map dot value. So all this is doing is throwing all the values from our map into our heap. And now we get to the actual processing. So we need a return value, so I'm just gonna call this cycles, because typically when you're dealing with CPUs, you're talking about how many cycles are running, and or sorry, how many cycles have passed, and how long a certain process takes in terms of cycles, things like that. So Cool, so now the idea is that we're gonna use our max heap to determine when we're done processing. So if our max heap is empty, we're done. Otherwise, we have some processing to do, so we're gonna do that. So while our max heap is not empty, right, we still have some sort of processing to do. And so now what we wanna do is we wanna try and process, again, the most frequently occurring task that we can, right, whatever's available. So like here, we couldn't run A, so we would've run the next thing. Maybe there would've been a third task, C, in some example that we could have run. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna iterate through however long the cooldown interval is, and we're just gonna constantly try and take tasks to process. So to do that, we'll just say for an i equals zero, well i is less than n plus one, because it's inclusive, right? So if a cooldown is 10 seconds, we need to actually make sure we're waiting a full 10 seconds, not nine. So we will say, while it's less than n plus one, i plus plus, and we're actually gonna also make a list, okay? So we're gonna make a list called integer, we'll name it temp equals new array list. And so the idea of temp here is we're just gonna store all the processes that we're actually able to run in this while loop, or the current iteration of this while loop. So here, we would have been able to run A and B, and then we would have been idle. The next time we would have been able to run A and B, and then we would have been idle. So now we'll just simply check if the max heap max heap is not empty. Then we're just gonna record the fact that we're running whatever's in its root. So we'll say temp.add max heap dot remove. And so again, all we're doing is we're taking the current thing in the root of the max heap and we're just gonna say, okay, we're running this. So now once this loop terminates, we need to determine, okay, everything that was in temp, right? So everything that we just ran for the given cooldown interval, um, does it still need to be processed more, right? And so we determined that a process needs to be run, right? If it still has some number left, right? So every time we run a process, we want to decrement the value. Uh, and if it's not zero, then we have to add it back to the heap, right? Because we have to run it again. So we'll just iterate through everything in temp. So for int i in temp, and we'll just check if we subtract, so if i minus minus, so if we subtract one from that current value that we're on in temp, if that's greater than zero, that means that that task still has to be run, right? So that's like us running a once, we still have to run a twice, or sorry, two more times, right? Because it occurs three times, so that's all we're doing. So if we haven't run it enough times, we're gonna say max heap dot add i. So we're just adding it back to the heap. So now finally, once we get here, we need to account for how many cycles it actually run. So there's only one interesting scenario, like there's two things that could potentially happen, but every time one, one of them will happen except the end. So at the very end, if we, let's say, run right like here, our two processes, A and B, um, we don't actually need to sit there and be idle for the other, you know, however many seconds of the cooldown, right? We only did that much processing to run A and B, and then we should terminate, we should just be done. So what we can say is we'll say, well, we'll increment cycles by looking at max heap and if it's empty. So if max heap dot is empty, if that's true, then we know we only need to increment cycles by however many things that we ran. So we'll just say temp dot size. And otherwise, that means that we needed to wait the full cooldown period. Like this is a scenario where we run in and we just have to sit there and be idle. So we'll say plus n plus one. So again, the idea is just that if we can just simply terminate, right, we just finished running the remainder of the tasks, we only want to increment the number of cycles by however many processes we just ran, but every other time we probably get stuck at the cooldown, so we're just going to increment our cycles by n plus one, which is the cooldown. So now finally, once this loop terminates, right, our max heap will be empty, and then we should have processed all the tasks, so all we have to do is return our cycles. So let's make sure that this works. 
Awesome, and it looks like it does. So guys, that's how to solve task scheduler on leak code in Java. I hope this is helpful. Good luck on all your interviews. If you guys have any questions or anything I could help you with, be sure to leave in the comments. I'll see you guys.